five. That's right, five simple sewing machine hacks to greatly improve the relationship you're having with your power tool. Let's get to it. Welcome back to So Well. I am Rob Appel, and the well here is about wellness. And for me, quilting really helps me achieve that goal, feeling better each and every day. If you don't know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, and I gotta keep these hands pretty dang busy, and quilting and sewing is one of my favorite ways to do that. And today we're talking about relationships, relationships with our power tools, right? As sewers and quilters, there's probably no more valuable tool in our sewing room, but like all great relationships, sometimes they need a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of care. Now, these are the things that we can do ourselves. Again, five super simple hacks that really improve the quality of the stitch, the quality of the sewing, the quality of the time you spend with your machine. This is not to prevent you from going and seeing a professional technician. So for me, once a year, the amount I sew, my machines go in for a, a full service, cleaning, evaluation, the whole thing maybe you don't get to sew quite as much. So two years is your longest recommendation from me. And please note, one of the very worst things you can do for a sewing machine is use it a bunch, then not use it at all, and then try to use it again. As a matter of fact, I was just uh, working with a friend and her machine was all jammed up because of that reason. So as we have these wonderful, super simple hacks to work with, I'm gonna take you through step by step. These are the things that you can and should be doing constantly. Some of us will talk about every five bobbins, but let's just start together today with at the beginning of each project or quilt. Maybe your projects are small. At any rate, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean my feed dogs, okay? So the feed dogs are the part on the machine that move the fabric under the presser foot. For safety reasons, I'm gonna remove the foot right now, and I'm also gonna remove the needle. That's actually one of the, the tricks down the road, but we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna simply remove my cover plate, and today's information is gonna focus a lot around the drop-in bobbin style machines because they seem to be the ones that build up the most amount of lint. And as we get onto hack number two, this will be easier for you to see and make a little bit more sense. The information, of course, will pertain to all sewing machines except for what I talk specifically about the way this bobbin is gonna sit because it's a drop-in bobbin. Got my stitch plate off. I'm gonna move my bobbin out of the way. Oh, and this is fantastic because I was afraid I wasn't gonna have a very good example for you. But lo and behold, right down here, you can see there's a bunch of fuzz or lint built up right down in there under those feed dogs or between the feed teeth. Folks, your sewing machine manufacturer did not pack little felt pads between the gums and those feet to prevent noise or anything. That is simply lint built up mostly from the fibers that we're working around. So I do, I use that old needle to kind of scrape that out of the way first. Then I'm gonna use one of these wonderful little dry brushes. You'll notice with all the cool hacks coming down the road, you do not see one of those cans of spray air. <sighs> I can't tell you how bad that is for your sewing machine. One, because you haven't removed all the covers. So if you do blow into the machine, you're just gonna blow the lint everywhere you can't get to the next time. Two, those cans are full of uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. So they're gonna actually take two or three blasts and then they're gonna put moisture in here, making lint mud in your machine. And that's probably the worst thing you could do other than not using the machine at all. So I'm gonna take a dry brush, an old paint brush, and I'm just gonna start flicking and clicking and getting all of this lint out of here as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna brush this out of the machine as much as possible. So we all know that our machine should be clean, but the first hack is clean between the feed dogs themselves. Because if your feed dogs can't come all the way up through the stitch plate, your fabric's gonna start to slip and shift and your seam allowances are gonna be off. And you're gonna think, man, this sewing machine's not behaving the way I wish it would. 
Now, the second hack we can do is we're gonna actually clean under the bobbin case. And this is why I was kind of dividing this video uh, up into these drop-in bobbin machines. The drop-in bobbin machines tend to get a lot more lint built up underneath them because the bobbin case doesn't come out with each change of bobbin color, thread, something like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach down in here and I'm going to carefully, oh, oh my goodness, you would think I put this stuff here. And I've only been making a few quilts recently. Okay, so I have removed the bobbin case from this drop-in bobbin machine. And I'm hoping you can see this is an, oh my goodness, just an incredible amount of lint has built up since the last time I serviced my machine. So I'm gonna get as much of this and I don't want to just kind of pack it into the machine. I wanna remove it as much as possible. I wanna get in here and just get this out of here as much as I can. You'll notice the cleaning is getting easier and easier from between the feed dogs now that that bobbin case is out of the way. So the second hack really is clean under the bobbin case. And the reason that this is so important is if you get too much lint under the bobbin case, it's gonna actually start to lift up inside of your sewing area. That's gonna throw off the way your stitch is forming. Maybe some of you have had some of these erratic loops on the back of your projects. And I'm not talking so much about free motion, I'm talking about your patchwork or your standard sewing if you're working on garments, where you're sewing along for quite a while and all of a sudden you see a loop, a loop, maybe your thread jams or breaks. It's very possible that if you have a drop-in bobbin machine, you've gotten too much fiber inside and underneath this bobbin case and it's starting to lift and become a problem. Hack number three put a drop of oil underneath this bobbin case on the ring, or if you've got a regular bobbin case, you're gonna be putting a, or I should say a front mount bobbin case, you're gonna be putting a drop or two of oil around the race, around the parts that are moving. These are going around in circles, and so we need to lubricate them. Your owner's manual may be arguing with me, and let me explain why, especially in a drop-in bobbin machine. Folks, this beautiful piece of um, hardware is made from plastic. We have all been taught that oil and plastic don't get along. I'm also gonna tell you this piece of hardware is not all that expensive. So over years and years and years of sewing, you'll probably replace this anyways. Or if you put it in wrong and you run your needle through it, you'll replace it immediately. And if your machine gets too dirty inside, it's gonna rotate and shift and jam up and you're gonna put your needle through it and you're gonna replace it anyways. So far, I've been right. Nobody has worn out a bobbin case by two drops of oil <laughs> as quickly as they've worn it out by running a needle through it. So let me show you how I like to do this. What I like to do for ease of use, this is the part here that is going to sit on this track here. So that's the part that needs to be lubricated. It's very easy to put a drop of oil. And now as I lower my bobbin case back in, maybe I can give you a bonus hack if possible. This section right here is a little bit of a spring. Make sure that this bump or catch is on the left hand side of this spring, right? You need to make sure that that's there. However, a lot of sewing machine uh, designs will have part of that catch built into the bottom of the stitch plate, and therefore you may not see it. Make sure you know that your bobbin case is back in correctly, because even though I was joking a moment ago, I have seen a million of these bobbin cases come in. I used to be a sewing machine technician, by the way, if you didn't know that. And, and there would be piercings in the plastic bobbin case uh, from where the needle had gone through it. So it, it doesn't destroy it, but it doesn't make for a better sewing either. So at any rate, we're gonna make sure that we have our bobbin case with a couple of drops of oil and is seated correctly before we go ahead and put this machine back together. So now that that bobbin case is all back together and there's no thread in the machine and there's no needle in the machine, by hand, I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna make a couple of rotations and what that is doing is it's moving that oil around underneath the bobbin case on the race or the hook system of the machine to go ahead and make sure that lubrication is evenly dispersed before we put any thread in there. Uh, side note again, man, you're getting about 18 different hacks today, but Make sure that you run a couple of 
inches of not so important fabric through because you have been oiling. Always do some test sewing before you go back to your regular project if you've been working on your machine this way. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop my bobbin back in because I'm gonna need it eventually. Put my little cover on here because we are done downstairs like that. The next most important thing I can offer you, hack number four, is change your needle often. Again, probably at the beginning of every project. However, there are different needles for different jobs. I've been very blessed to have one of the larger sewing machine needles on the planet offered to me. And we use this to talk about the different structures of the needles, the way the eye is built, the way the tip is built, the structure of it and all for educational purposes, right? But I'm gonna tell you today that my very favorite needle, hands down, almost regardless of any project I'm doing, is what is called a Microtex or Sharps, and I prefer the size 80 slash 12. If you'd like to know more about the numbering system of needles or threads, please leave me a comment below and maybe we can make another video for you to explain all of that if you're brand new to sewing. But right now what I want to explain, the word Microtex and the word Sharps are the same, just different manufacturers of needles use the different names on their packaging. The Schmetz brand uses the word Microtex and the big thing is, is the needle has been developed with a very, very sharp tip. The reason that's so important is it gets quickly through the fibers of your fabric to deliver the thread down into the bobbin area as quick as possible. So if you've ever had a problem, uh, you know, I love a lot of batiks and a lot of fusible web and a lot of applique and things. So this is where I learned this trick. The more dense, the more layers, you're going to want to use a sharps. Now, you may want to go to a size 90, but I prefer the 80s. That's a little bit of a per personal choice. But remember, hack four is just simply change your needle often. I'm not saying my needle choice is the best, I'm just saying it works great in our relationship. Now, with that fresh needle, the second bonus hack to this is make sure you get the needle all the way up. So I've got the needle, you probably can't even see it, but I'm pushing it all the way up into the machine, locking it down super tight. Feels fantastic that way because if your needle wasn't all the way up, it's gonna actually change the timing of the entire sewing machine. So if you've ever just changed your needle and things aren't going well, stop. Make sure not only do you have the needle in correctly, but it's also all the way up. Here it is, number five. The probably most important of all the hacks I've shared with you today, Use top quality thread. Now you can see for a lot of years, I've been an Orophil fan myself. It's a long staple Egyptian cotton. Now cotton threads will provide a little bit more lint throughout the sewing process uh, over polyester threads. There's a lot of great cotton threads out there, but you're looking for a long staple thread. That means you're gonna have less of those little, little fibers hanging out all over the place. And the reason that's so important is this, is what's left over from all of those little fibers. A majority of the schmutz that ends up in your machine is coming off of your thread. So the better thread that you use, the better your machine will run. And not only will it run beautifully down in your bobbin area, but it also really helps in the tension area as well. So before I sign off today, I actually have a bonus sixth hack, although I think I'm on number 12 at this point anyways. But it really is, you always should have the thread traveling in the sewing direction. Now, what does that mean? When I'm getting ready to change colors, I'm gonna cut the thread at the top of the spool, and I'm gonna grab it at the eye of the needle, and I'm gonna pull it all the way out, keeping the thread always running out of the machine. You're gonna have a lot of that thread fiber or lint building up, up under your needle bar. So if you were to grab your spool and pull it up, taking it back out in the reverse order, it's very possible that that thread is gonna grab that fuzz and it's gonna bring it back up, but the first thing it will get stuck on is the tension discs on the inside of the machine. And if you remember my good friend Chewbacca in the original Star Wars, which I think is number four, he's holding that trash compactor, right? Well, can you imagine what the fuzz could do in the 
tension system to not allow your tension discs to close correctly. But again, probably a story for another day where we're going to get more technical about troubleshooting our tension issues. So again, in the comments below, let me know. Would you like to know how to troubleshoot your tension issues as well? I would love to share that information with you. So thanks again for being here today. Again, make sure you're subscribed so that we can keep bringing you all of this wonderful sewing knowledge and inspiration right here at Sew Well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.